guys, so welcome to the secret video. This is the video I've been talking about if you've been following my YouTube channel for the last couple videos. It's all about the Smitty Sled. Now this is my Smitty Sled build and what I've done with this one is I've tried to compile all the cool design features from all the other Smitty Sled videos that I've uh, come across, articles I've read, and just whatever I could think about and I've tried to design the most ultimate Smitty Sled. So here it is, I'm gonna talk about it and show you what I've come up with and hopefully you'll get something out of this. Maybe this will inspire you to make a cool Smitty Sled. You can use this design as well. Let me know, send me pictures, that would be awesome. So the two main goals I had when designing the Smitty Sled was compactability and for it to have as few pieces as possible, especially small pieces. Compactability was going to allow me to break it down and fit it in the trunk or back seat of my car. This was just going to allow for more space in the car to fit other things like the hut and all the other stuff. So now I'm going to talk to you about the features of my Smitty Sled. So the first thing you're going to notice is this unique design of the bracket. Now it's attached in the center of the ski. And the reason for this is because skis actually have a natural arch in them where they come up in the middle. And what that's for is so that when the person actually steps on the ski, they compress this arch and then it becomes flat and actually glides on the surface better. So you can actually see this arch more clearly when I put it against a flat edge like this. So there's actually quite a bit of space there. And once this becomes load bearing, then it flexes and becomes flat and that slides with less friction on the surface. Most Smitty Sled designs out there attach their brackets at the front and the back, something like this. But the problem here is that the force, all the load is being transferred at these flat points and they don't take advantage of this arch and you're actually doing yourself less of a favor. You're starting to pull more weight instead of actually having that gliding feature of the ski. I attached this bracket with five screws coming in from the bottom countersunk so they don't cause extra drag and a very strong multi-purpose glue. The next thing you're going to notice are these holes in the bracket themselves and the main purpose for this was just to make it lighter. But they actually work out to be awesome hand holders and you can actually use them as an attachment point for bungees which add an extra awesome feature. I constructed the brackets out of a piece of 2x6 so this used to be a full 2x6 and that's just to allow my gear to be elevated off the ground and less chance of my tent or whatnot dragging in snow. The last big design feature is this right here where the boards or stretchers, I don't know what you want to call them, um, meet with the bracket. This gave me the most trouble and actually still does. And this is why it's taken so long for the video to come out because I'm still not fully committed on how I want to secure these down. For sure, I think this lap joint design is the way to go in the Smitty Sled. Now, what you'll notice is I don't this doesn't seat in between in the middle of the piece of wood. I actually cut off the notch that was supposed to be here um, because at the time I thought it wasn't going to be that necessary. But it turns out that it's actually a good idea to keep that. So for example, if you want to be trailering, you can wrap a piece of rope around the back. And if you did have the notch back here, you wouldn't worry about this sliding back. Uh, it tends not to be too bad just with the weight of the gear that's rested on top. but that's something to think about.
And now this brings me into the four main design issues that I had with this build. The first was how to solve the raising of the stretcher so it doesn't come off. Uh, the second was sliding off, uh, which I just mentioned is really easy to fix just by adding a notch here. The fourth is the buckling of the skis. And finally, the last, not that big of a deal, but it's the uh, where to attach the rope. Um, there's a lot of things you could do. Right now, I'm just hooking the rope through here and all the way to the other side over there um, and pulling from this point on both sides. But, I mean, you could maybe attach a eye here or at the tip of the ski or even or even right under the ski you can have an attachment on both sides so for the buckling issue the lap joint actually helps because it allows the bracket itself to kind of grip onto the side and prevent it from well buckling in is how it actually is the problem and you can see here when I was doing some prototyping uh, I just had I took a piece and tried to see how I was gonna attach it. Now this had a much smaller lip and so the bracket was free to, to fall if, there, if I hit some ice or something. Um, and you can even see all the paint that kind of rubbed off there. But with something with a, a deeper notch, you have more grip and that prevents that. The best way, however, is to actually have a point to secure both brackets together uh, either another piece of wood or a piece of metal is what I was thinking you want something that's not going to bend either that's going to be able to flex but then also go back to its original position this is again one of the reasons why I haven't posted the video yet because I'm still dealing with this trying to figure out what I'm going to do um, the lower you attach that piece to the bottom of the bracket of both brackets is gonna provide the most support to prevent this kind of tilting motion. Uh, you could just imagine, like that's where that motion is occurring. If you have it up here, it'll still be able to just wobble a bit more, but again, lower to the bottom, the better. The problem with lower is that you're getting closer to the snow, and if it does sink a bit and you're starting to drag that piece, like you could just imagine that piece is dragging through the snow. Well, that's something that you're pulling. It's just causing extra drag and making it harder for you to pull, which is not preferable. So if I was gonna pick that solution, I would make it like a thin piece of metal. You can just imagine that thin piece of metal is gonna cut through the snow more easily uh, instead of it being like a, a block like this, you know, dragging through the snow, that's gonna be harder to pull. Now talking about the raising issue, this is probably the most challenging, the, the most varied options that I haven't committed to yet. There's so many ways you could think of preventing the, this piece from coming out. You want, I wanted it to be compactable. So for me to just secure these with a screw or glue them, it would just defeat the purpose. Uh, it has to be able to come off at the end of the day. One of the ways to do that is just with a nut and a bolt or a wing nut. But like I said, I'm trying to minimize pieces. Uh, even one of the things I thought of was making like a, a dovetail groove. So instead of this being uh, flat and square, it would kind of be triangular like this. And that would, so if the piece was in there, that would prevent the piece from coming out. The piece could still slide uh, side to side like this so you just have to secure that that is one way to do it harder if you don't have the right tools of course and that way i don't have to worry about a bunch of little pieces and it's actually a part of the design of the bracket which holds the piece of wood down another thing i thought of was just to have more notches so one here obviously this is in the way but you can just imagine maybe one in the middle that would just allow for more configurations of where to place the stretcher um, or even if you want to add more stretchers also to cut more notches throughout the board which would also allow uh, you to bring the skis closer in or wider apart these are obviously extended all the way 
but if I were to cut more, uh, you know, twin pieces, I could bring these skis closer together. You may have also noticed this um, and also in those original brackets. So originally I had two pins, uh, like wooden dowels sticking up. They actually broke off. I realize that that's, it's not really that useful. If you are going to use a, a pin or uh, this kind of a dowel pin uh, solution, you don't really need two. The point of having two was to potentially stop it from, from stop the skis from sliding forward and back. Um, but because you have this, because you have this notch, it'll stop. If this is just going to be on top, then you would need two because just having one, it would, the skis would still be allowed to pivot. But regardless, I just filled those up with wood filler and that'll be the end of that. I will probably end up having like a bolt or something to secure this down. And just a note of reference, if you're going to do this, wait until the end to drill your hole. So you drill the hole through both the stretcher and also the bottom over there. That way your holes line up because one of the problems I had with this is I made the mistake of drilling the dowels in and gluing them in first and then drilling hopefully matching holes like with the right measurements but there's lots of inaccuracy and that was just a problem one of the reasons why they they all snapped off so as you can see it's still kind of in the prototyping stage version 1.0 is good but version 2.0 will be even better hey guys i'm coming to you from the present right now it's november 3rd i originally uploaded this video in february of 2021 I took it down less than a day later. Um, now I'm re-uploading it. I made a few changes, but for the most part, the video has stayed pretty much the same. One of the things I did change was this outro, but I wanted to come and say, if you like this video and if you like this build, you wanna know more about it, let me know in the comments below uh, and subscribe so that you're up to date on when I do upload about it in the coming season, uh, this ice fishing season. Also, I wanna point you in a couple directions. Right here, you can click on my playlist of other DIY kind of things I've built on this channel, I've done. And over here, you can click on some ice fishing videos. If you're getting that itch and you wanna start watching, right here, click over here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.